Welcome back to the Nebraska Land Bank podcast. I love today's episode. We're talking with Brody Lineman. Brody is a high school senior who is truly an entrepreneur at heart. Brody's the owner of Tribe Skate Shop. In this episode, we hear how he became an entrepreneur as a freshman in high school. He's also leading a fundraising effort for the North Platte Skate Park. And we talked a little bit about what local business owners need to do to attract uh, young people as customers and employees. It's going to be a good episode. Thanks for tuning in and we hope you enjoy. Hi, I'm Danielle. And I'm Ty. Together, we are hosting the Nebraska Land Bank podcast. We promise this isn't some boring bank podcast. That's right. We aim to entertain. Listen in every other Monday and we'll tackle topics like finance, business, sports, community events, and maybe even a course or two of great food finds. We're always community minded. Every voice. Every topic. Every time. So turn the volume up, settle in, and and let's let's talk talk Nebraska Nebraska land. Okay, well, the sun's out today, and I can kind of see the end of winter coming our way. I've noticed with the pandemic uh, rolling back just a little bit on the wrist dial that people are out and about a little more in the community. actually took my uh, wife out recently for for Valentine's Day. It was a little while ago. But uh, what what have you been up to? Are Are you coming out of hibernation? A little bit. Yes. Now that it's getting a little bit nicer or the weather seems to be turning, I'm so excited to be able to get out and enjoy some nice weather. When I took Jackie out for Valentine's Day and it was it was the Thursday before Valentine's Day, it we went and had dinner at the Cedar Room downtown. And, you know, I'd heard a lot of things and I'd been in there a couple of times. But this was one of the first times we would kind of sat and had a full Nice meal at the Cedar Room. It was a really nice way to to celebrate Valentine's Day. I love, I love it there. They have a strawberry basil Moscow mule. I think that's what it is. It's so, it's to die for. Did you or Jackie happen to see that on the menu? Well, you know, I'm probably not into the foo-foo drinks <laughs> as much as some, but, but Jackie actually, they made her a, some kind of a gin drink. And apparently based on what they put on it, it turns different colors. So oh, it wow. turned like purple. So it was kind of festive and and that, but uh, but I I think I've learned that their food specials are pretty cool at the Cedar Room. They do brunch too. Oh, I've heard that. I haven't been there yet. We went there. I'm not usually a breakfast potato person. I ate every single one of them until they were gone. <laughs> they were so good. I loved it. Well, that sounds good. Where else in town do you like to go? Where do you and Jared like to go out? We go. I mean, we try. We go all over the place, really, but. I like I'm so excited for nice weather. And generally, if it's nice out, I will pick somewhere where we can sit outside. So I love pals because of the outdoor atmosphere. Love another round for the same reason. What's your favorite thing on the menu at at pals and another round too? What's your favorite thing? Pals is probably they're probably going to be angry at me for saying this because I think it was like a special that they they made. It was one of their pizzas. And I can't even remember what it was called. But now I ask for it every time I go, and it's not a regular thing on the menu. I think I know what it is. Is it the Keegan special? Yes. Okay, Keegan, <laughs> it, it is just now on the menu. It is. Okay. Yeah, I'm, so <laughs> Keegan Keegan is is the son of one of the owners and works in the kitchen, and he developed that pizza. It kind of has like pepperoni, hot sauce, and cheese sriracha grits. or yeah, whatever. Yeah. It is so good. <laughs> it is so, so good. We had a friend that that turned us on to that. And now every every time I go, that's what I get. I think it's so good. So, yes, I'm so excited for it to get nice out. Um, and then when we do pizza, we we always do. Dave's Place is always in the mix, too. They have great wings. Oh, yeah. Dave's Place. Fantastic wings. The the classic our combination. Their taco pizza are just wonderful uh, there. Have you now have you been down to Good Life in the Bricks? I have. It's been a little while since I've done Good Life on the Bricks, but that's a good, I feel like that's a good lunch spot for me. I tend to go there for lunch because again, especially when it's nice out, I love sitting out on their little open seating area outside. Yeah, it's nice. We're starting to get some places like Another Round has their beautiful deck. Pals has the neat outdoor door at at Good Life on the Bricks. I got turned on to their, um, they have an Alabama white sauce, which it's weird because I lived in the South for some time and I like never knew about Alabama white barbecue sauce. Never heard of it. Oh, it's horseradish base and it is wonderful. I have a friend that makes homemade horseradish and white barbecue sauce. I don't know where my life was without white barbecue sauce, I'm but they do try it. they do a good job at Good Life on the Bricks with that. I need to try it. I also need to go on a diet. So <laughs> I don't, <laughs> all this talk about food is not good for me. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. It is that time of year to focus on the diet a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yep, it is. Well, 
Lots of good places to eat in North Platte. So let's go ahead and welcome our guest today. It's time to welcome Brody Lineman. Brody, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. You guys got me hungry. I know, right? <laughs> we should have brought some food in today. We're going to have all this food talk. Yeah. I know. It's just about lunchtime too, and I haven't eaten yet. So <laughs> I think I know where I'm going to go after after today's interview. Well, Brody, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm 18 and I run Tribe Skate Shop here in North Platte, Nebraska. And I'm also the head of MP Skateboarding, a where we're trying to fund a new skate park for North Platte. Awesome. And you are just graduating this year, right? Yep. Just graduated. Just graduated. Well, congratulations. Thank you. That's exciting. Now tell me a little bit about like your history with Tribe. When you got started, what kind of lit that desire and gave you the idea to even get into the business? So when I started skateboarding, there was the local skate shop, Caravan Skate Shop, and that was ran by Brandon Raby. I started going there at a young age and I like, ever since I started, the only thing I would put my money towards is skateboarding. I would... (laughs) I would mow my grandma's yard and then I would just spend that money on a skateboard. I kept going in there all the time. And then eventually Brandon asked me to start working at the skate shop. And I was 13 when he asked me to start working at the skate shop. And I started working there and learning all about the industry behind it and the culture and everything involving skateboarding and the business side of it. And then from there, I worked there for two years, I think. And then my freshman year, Brandon uh, purchased the Expresso shop and was going to sell the skate shop. So that's when I took over the skate shop. And And how old were you at that point? You said freshman? uh, I was a freshman in high school. And then I started just selling skateboards out of my basement, basically. (laughs) And Brandon was one of my very early mentors. He kind of showed me how a business works, how to make connections in business and so on. I love how your passion for skateboarding kind of drove your interest in starting this business. Yes, definitely. <laughs> That's awesome. It's also interesting, the role that mentorship, you know, we were talking about food places earlier. This espresso shop is absolutely one of North Platte's go-to places. I mean, their lunch specials and their breakfast sandwiches in particular are my favorite. And But it's funny because I imagine that him being willing to take the time and mentor you played a crucial role in that decision to go into business on your own, right? Yeah, I think Brandon really saw the passion I had for skateboarding and he kind of showed me how I could take that to the next step and do that with business. So what are some of the lessons that you've learned since your freshman year and kind of starting this in terms of business that are going to help you succeed in the future? Definitely how to manage money (laughs) and how to market products and a bunch of other things. (laughs) Yeah. You have a passion for photography as well, don't you? Yeah, I like film photography because there's this whole process in making the photos. So I develop the film by myself and I go in my bathroom with a little tank and reel it on there in the dark. And then you put the chemicals in. It's really cool process on how the photos are made, which I enjoy a lot. Are you able to kind of use that skill in marketing your tribe scape shop too? Or are they kind of two separate? I use my film photography as like a hobby basically, but... The photography aspect definitely helps with like product photos, that sort of thing, and all the online photos. You have a lot of products on your website. I was looking at your website. Talk to us a little bit about the products you carry and how you select them. I was really interested in how you choose the products to sell. So when I choose products, it's usually about the brand and how what they represent and how they kind of relate to my business. And I like I like a lot of the more artsy boards with really colorful graphics and fun art. Is is uniqueness important in that as well? Yeah, I think a lot of the younger kids are drawn to the graphics that we choose. So Brody, you're currently taking, you mentioned two or three classes at Mid Plains Community College. What are your aspirations for the future? And like, what are you going to college for? Um, I'm going to college to get my associates in business management. And I hope to just further my business and also start other business. Great. I'm interested in what you talked about learning to manage money. Of course, we're bank and we like to talk (laughs) about money around here because we find that people are good at managing money, don't have to spend as much time thinking about it and they can do other things with their life. How did that money management, how did you learn about that? And in particular, how much decide and how do you inventory stuff? Do you hold a lot of inventory? Um, Yeah, I have a decent amount of inventory. Okay. How do you decide how much money you need on hand and how to spend money on inventory and how to manage all that? 
So basically I look at, I make a report for each month and basically a, a balance sheet of how much I sold and how much I spent. And then I kind of use that as a, as a little guide to how much inventory I need to purchase and what decisions I need to make towards the next month. Tell us a little bit about the kids skate camps that you facilitated over the summer. So we started a skate camp to kind of teach younger kids or even older kids how to skateboard. And we did board designs and we just did all these different games over the summer to teach them how to skateboard. And we implemented these games to teach them to skateboard in a fun way. And it really was beneficial to these younger kids in our area and provided them a something to do during the summer because there's not a whole lot to do in North Platte. I think that was a lot of fun. I just can't tell you enough how much I just appreciate you, Brody. Ben is my middle child and he's he's picked up and taken an interest in skateboarding. And Brody, you are just like such a role model to some of those kids out there. And I think you just have such a heart for for kids too, it seems like. I mean, it just seems like you definitely invest a lot of your time and energy into giving them and providing them opportunities to grow and learn in skateboarding. And me, I just appreciate it so much. It's definitely made an impact on on my son's life. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, li- I really like seeing people enjoy what I enjoy too. Yeah, yeah, he definitely does. Where are your customers mostly located? Are most of them located here in North Platte or do you have customers from afar that buy products from you? It, it's usually North Platte based. Um, we have our little store at a live outside where we sell beginner completes. So a lot of our sales come from there. And also we sell around Nebraska, Lincoln, Omaha. And we've had orders to California a lot. Okay, so let's say I'm in California. How would I find out about you? And then what kind of products do they normally buy? And then how do you get those products to the buyer? So I think they would find out through social media and the way I market like my ads towards them. And I stay tuned with what's going on in skateboarding. So I kind of know what those people are interested in. And then do they buy online then? Yeah. Okay. And then do you just new, use, so then you have the inventory here and you use FedEx or UPS to get it to them? Is that how it yeah, works? Yeah, I use UPS and they just order through my Squarespace website. Do you manage all that yourself, your website? And yep. did you build it or is it kind of one of those template based? Yeah, it's a template based. Gotcha. So it makes it really easy to create a custom website. I noticed that your hoodie sweatshirt was the first thing on the website when I pulled it up to look at it. Good looking soft. It looked like a soft sweatshirt, you know, like a really good, soft, comfy sweatshirt. When I looked at it, I was like, oh, that looks like one of those good (laughs) soft ones. But help me understand, how do you pick what products go on the website first and what order? How, what made you choose to put that at the front of the website? That was like the first clothing I've made for the shop. So I kind of wanted to advertise that quite a bit to see how it would do. And so far it's done pretty good. Good. That's great. So Shifting gears just a little bit, also notice when you visit the website, there's a link where you can find more information about the North Platte Skate Park. And you've recently taken over kind of leading that charge in North Platte. So why don't you give us a little bit of history and tell us a little bit about your involvement with North Platte Skate Park Fund? So ever since I was little, I've been going to the skate park and it's gotten a bit beat up over the years. It's got cracks and it's fallen apart. And I saw the growth of people using the skate park and I thought we need a new skate park here and we deserve a new skate park here. And I know all the local skateboarders, they just take care of the park and they love the skate park. It's a second home to a lot of us. And so that kind of sparked me continuing this fundraiser that Brandon and Mary Lee Hyde had already implemented. What are some of your upcoming plans for that? Or what are, I guess, what are your goals for that and your vision for the skate park? And then how, how do you plan to achieve them? Our goal is to raise around 130,000 to 200,000. And we got this design plan from Spawn Ranch, a skate park design firm. And we want to find a location and then have Spawn Ranch build the skate park. Spawn Ranch, where where did you find them? They're based out of California, I believe, and they've built some of the best skate parks in the world. What do you think that getting involved in an activity like skateboarding does for youth? So let's take, for example, when did you when did you start going to the state skate park and skateboarding heavily? I was about six. Okay. 
So take maybe from age six to maybe when you were 10 or 12, what do you think that hobby did for you that ended up being positive in your life? It gave me something to do. And it like all my connections that I've made through anything is all through skateboarding. I've met all of my friends through skateboarding, anyone in business through skateboarding. I, I mean, I definitely think that it, it definitely creates like a sense of community. Yeah, it does. And it's not like a regular sport where you have a team and you have practices. You can just go and do it on your own with your friends wherever. I imagine that it, it takes a lot of practice and work to be good at it. Yes, it does. Is I mean, if, if a, let's say a kid who's 10 to 12 years old got involved with it, how long does it take them before they get fairly skilled at it? Well, it took me about five years to get wow. decently good on the skateboard. So it does take a lot of practice, but I think it's well worth it. He is very talented too. I obviously can see some of your your skate videos online, but if anybody's interested, I don't even know. Do you have a, a spot that people can go that's public where they can kind of see some of your skating online? On my Instagram account at Brody Lineman. And that's public. It's not yep. private. It's incredible. I mean, this kid is so talented. I know that Ben, I've mentioned him a couple of times. My son has started. His growth has really shocked me. He's definitely grown a lot. And it gives him such a sense of pride and accomplishment when he does better. And I feel like um, I was talking about the community earlier. What I've seen is it seems like everybody at the skate park, the kids and the people that attend are so supportive of one another too, and are interested in helping each other grow in the skill. So it's definitely just a really neat hobby to have, I guess, in the community that it creates. Yeah. I think the way it works at the skate park, everyone just kind of builds off each other and just progresses together at their own level. And once we're all learning tricks together, it makes for a really fun environment. Brody, how did you, I'm really interested on how you learned some of the basic business skills to run your business. How did you learn to do marketing? I learned a lot of that through Brandon and how he was marketing the skate shop. How about the money management and the accounting side, like keeping track of things and how to accept payment on your website? How did you learn all of those things? My mom kind of showed me how to keep track of my money. So I would just write down in a little book how many sales I made in the month. And through online, I just kind of researched through YouTube and learned about making websites and learning how to advertise on Instagram and Facebook. What about buying products? Where do you find the sources to buy products from? How do you go about that? I usually, once I see a company through social media that I'm interested in, I'll either email them to or go on their website and see if they have wholesale accounts. And your inventory in a live outside, how did that partnership come to fruition? Ariel, the manager at a live outside, he contacted me and asked if I he could help me grow my brand and put a little section there. So that was very nice of him. And so when you reach out to those vendors, like if you see a vendor with a wholesale account, are they pretty receptive to dealing with somebody at your age or do you find that ever to be an obstacle? Honestly, I don't even think they know how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. You've got a great story. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, you've got somebody who developed a passion for something. They were young. They start a business with the help of mentors and it sounds like family and they, they, you start a, a business that appears to be a very successful business, and now you're focused on giving back to the community. And that, I mean, frankly, it's kind of our business model in, in, a, different, in a different scale and at a different point in time. Um, I mean, it's the same way we operate here at the bank. We're passionate about what we do, and our job is to serve our customers and bring unique and creative things to them. And then to turn around and try to do things back in the community, in our world, to make it a better place to be. So I don't think we're that different, even though we're selling different <laughs> yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> so going back to the the skate park fund, tell me a little bit of, for our listeners' sake about kind of some of the upcoming things that you have in plan for that and how our listeners might be able to help you reach your goals. We just plan on doing a lot of different fundraisers. We have donation buckets. All the locations for those can be found on our Facebook page. And we're going to just do an update on how much money we raised from these donation buckets. Also, our fundraiser through Mid-Nebraska is on our mpskateboarding.com. It's on our page and you can donate directly to our fund. And your son, Ben, he <laughs> recommended that we do a Little Caesars fundraiser. So that might be the next fundraiser. Great. And also in June 21st, we have a contest plan for Go Skateboarding Day. 
I think that I'm so excited to see how that develops. I think it sounds like a a super fun idea. So with that, tell us a little bit more about your vision for that event. Will you charge entry to enter the contest or kind of what are your thoughts? I think we might charge entry for the contest and then have food and other vendors there. And have different like skills. I don't know what you would call it on the so, skate park tricks um, yeah. that you would you would compete. So, you know, like horse and basketball mm-hmm. and game. Of, there's this game in skateboarding called a game of skate. And basically you try a trick and the other person has to repeat that trick. And if they don't land it, they get a letter. Okay. And so we'll probably do that. And then also we'll have a jam session where they can skate the whole park for a certain amount of time and just kind of perform their best tricks. That sounds... I just am excited about that. I mean, that, that would Isn't be that fun? fun to watch. It I would be. I would love to come out and watch some of that and to see that that skill. I, yeah. That's fantastic. How has um, how's education played a role in all of this? Have, have there been things you learned at North Platte High? And it sounds like you decided to graduate mid-semester or early. Yep. And I'm interested, how did education contribute to what, what you're doing in your business and in, in your hobby? I think at Mid Plains now, it's helping a lot and money management type stuff and investments. And at high school, I, at a very young age, I had this like business mindset. I was like selling candy at school and I sold these things called kendamas. They're a Japanese skill toy where you, uh, you try to land a ball on a cup and I sold those and those got very popular at school. And I don't know, school kind of helped me realize trends that are happening around me. You just have a little business mind, it sounds yeah. like. Well, what's interesting is I think if you, it's like you're a lightning rod out there for new ideas and you're grabbing onto them. And it sounds like I think you just touched on something that's probably pretty important to your business, and that's to find trend-setting things. Brody, in, in the topic of banking and money, what are the things you're interested in? What things would you like to talk about with us? Or what do you think are things that your age group's interested in in banking? I definitely think my age group is interested in stock investments. And I'm personally very interested in Roth IRA accounts and how they grow over time. And like starting at a young age, how much money you can build by using one of those accounts. Yeah. And for somebody your age to recognize what a powerful tool that is, I mean, you're just off to such a great start with money. But I keep telling the people that I work with here at the bank from being involved with our Nebraska and university classes and interacting with some of my um, my kids' friends, I think we have a generation coming that is going to be exceptionally good with money. I think that my, my opinion is that you guys witnessed the 07, 08, 09 economic crisis, and you would have been fairly young at that point in time, but you probably kind of knew there was something weird going on in the world. And then you come to this pandemic, and now there's a lot of sources out there. I mean, um, Dave Ramsey's got his radio show and his podcast and his group that's out there uh, a lot on Instagram and different things. And I think that we have a generation coming that's going to be really, really good with money. With the Roth, what interests you so much about about that type of account? Um, well, I've seen some things that like if you start early by the and you keep adding to this account, that it can reach millions of dollars by the time you are in your later life. Yeah. And here's the brilliance in what you're talking about with the Roth. When, when a young person is early in their stage of making income, all you have to qualify for Roth IRA, all you have to do is produce some income. And actually you can even set up a custodial IRA where family members can also contribute. So sometimes you'll, we'll see like a parent or grandparent say, okay, if you earn money, say grandson, for example, and put it into a a Roth IRA, I'll match that for you for Christmas or something like that. We see sometimes family members help that. But you could contribute up to $6,000 a year of earned income into a Roth IRA. And the beauty of it is, is when you're young, you're not paying much in income taxes. And so you get a big benefit because a Roth IRA is a retirement account that you put in after tax. And then the money grows completely tax-free and you can pull it out later tax-free in retirement age. And so the beauty is, is if you're early in your income earning life, your your taxes aren't that much. Your percentage of taxes of your income isn't that high. And so the tax deduction isn't a big deal. And so it, it's a great point for people to think about because a lot of people are very focused on putting money in their 401ks that are IRAs, but sometimes they jump over this Roth IRA, which is an ability to put post-tax money in an IRA and then have it grow tax-free. So it's a pretty interesting topic for a guy your age to be. Yeah. I'm very impressed that you're on top of that. 
<laughs> yeah, I find it very interesting. <laughs> It's definitely in our Nebraska University courses, which is a financial literacy scholarship program we offer to high school seniors. We do listen. We watch a little segment um, from Dave Ramsey, and it talks about the concept that you're talking about, about when you start saving early, how that money can grow. So kudos to you for grasping that idea and thinking about it early. Yeah. And like you said, I think it's become so much easier to invest your money. So kids our age are seeing that and they're investing in things like stocks like Robin Hood. Yeah, it's it's a great topic. And I think you're right about young people who have a lot of interest in stocks. I know from talking to uh, people I know in your same age group, you know, we've got some resources here at Nebraska Land Bank. We can set up Roth IRAs right here in the bank. And we can also set up regular IRAs. And of course, we work with young people all the time in setting up their checking accounts, their savings accounts, and maybe even an investing or stock account. Then here on our third floor, right next to the podcast studio, we have Professional Financial Advisors, or PFA. They're a tenant in our building, but they actually have a Smart Investor Pro on their staff, If for those Dave Ramsey followers out there. And they're out there to help people with financial planning and some of that too. And so I am so thrilled to see people in your age group invested in stocks and thinking about that things. Do you have a stock tip for us? Is there anything that you like out there today? Um. Uh, right now, I'm more interested in like long-term investing, so earning dividends off those. So I would look for stocks that pay you dividends over a long period of time. Interesting. And so is your thought with that, that by having a, inc- a dividend-producing stock, that it could be a source of income for you later in the future? Yeah, I think it would be a good source of passive income if like once you have enough shares in it and they pay you a decent amount of dividend income. Yeah, that's great. You know, we really want for for people in our community, in particular young people, to learn about the difference of managing money daily, like in a checking account, then having savings, and then having investing, long-term investing. And then if they also want to do a little stock trading, those are kind of all different things, but they can all coordinate coordinate well together. Yeah. Well, and it's funny that the Robinhood you bring up is an interesting topic because Robinhood does a lot of this stuff for free, don't they? Yeah, I think so. Well, it's funny. Maybe I'm just kind of older and skeptical, but I always tell my son, I'm like, always be careful of, there's no such thing as a free lunch out there. And so <laughs> the thing you always have to watch with Robinhood and some of those sources is if they're doing the stock trading for free, how are they producing revenue? How are their costs? Are they secure? And it's interesting because they were recently, I think it maybe were being investigated for, are they cutting like a margin into the stock? Like is, are they selling it to you at a little higher or a little lower price? And I don't know if they are or they aren't, or where that's at. But my advice to you to, would be to be cautious and research those outlets and just make sure they're secure. And if it is a free service, look into how are they generating money and are you okay with that, which you might very well be. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I find just like picking your brain as a Gen Z and kind of learning about about what you're interested in, super interesting. So what, in your opinion, from your Gen Z perspective, what do brands or companies need to do to engage your generation, keep you as customers and attract you as employees? Social media, definitely. You have to be good at using social media to be consistent with social media, and which is really hard to do, actually. (laughs) And learning about advertising through those social media platforms would help a lot. And you have to be very aware of trends that are going on in whatever niche you're selling in or whatever industry you're in. Is there are there like values that you you feel like companies need to possess in order for you to do business with them? Like um, probably the uh, the aesthetic of the company or what their purpose is. And like one of our purposes is just to give back to skateboarding. Like I do it mostly just for the local skateboarders. If you were looking for an employer, what would be the most important thing in selecting who you wanted to work for? Their work ethic. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think work ethic probably be the main thing. Good. Yeah, that's what we work. That's what we look for, too. Ty, can you think of any other questions for Brody today? No, I, I I mean, it's just been so much fun to talk to a young entrepreneur. You know, I think about how many people I work with every day that are college educated, have lots of work experience, and how difficult it is just to figure out all the little things it takes to run a business. Accounting, paying your taxes, accepting credit cards, having a website, setting up social media, 
having vendor relationships. I mean, this is a lot of work. So I, I'm, I'm a fan of what you're doing because I'm very impressed Thank that you. you've very impressed you figured all this out at your age. Okay, well, this seems like a natural transition to start our trivia game, Brody. With each episode, we end with a game of trivia. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. You have to get two of the three questions correct in order to win. If you win, you get $100 to award to a charity of your choice. I think we've got a great charity that you could donate to. So we'll just jump right in. I selected these questions and now I'm questioning my thought process here. I I was trying to select movie based trivia based on movies that are old, older, like movies that I would have watched, but then there's been a recent remake. So maybe movies that you would have been exposed to too. We'll see. Okay. Okay. What is the favorite food of the teenage mutant Ninja Turtles? Is it pizza? It is pizza. I didn't even have to give you the options. <laughs> <laughs> Good. This looks like he's going to do pretty well on this. So that was a pretty quick answer. Yeah. <laughs> Ty, I, I tested these on Ty earlier. He didn't know like any of the answers. <laughs> and I, but again, I'm not much of a movie watcher. So <laughs> okay. I'm probably, I was probably the wrong audience. So. Okay. Okay. This one hopefully might be a little more difficult. Abu in the Disney movie Aladdin is which type of animal? A, donkey. B, tiger. C, monkey. I'm going to say C. Good job. <laughs> was that a guess? That was a guess. <laughs> hey, it's kind of like ACT prep. If ever in doubt, go C. Go yeah. C. <laughs> Just sounded like a monkey name, I guess. Did you Have you watched Aladdin? I have, but I barely remember it. You watched, So you watched the original version or like the old school version, not no the idea. remake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. This one might be tough, but you've already got the first two right. So this will just be a bonus question out of curiosity. How does Charlie from Willy Wonka and the Ch Chocolate Factory, how does Charlie get down from the ceiling after he and Grandpa Joe steal the fizzy lifting drinks? A, Grandpa Joe pulls him down. B, burp. C, they yell for help. Uh, burp. Yes. Have you seen the movie? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <I was like, laughs> which version did you see? The Johnny Depp version? Or Johnny Depp. Okay. <laughs> hey, good job. Three for three. Yeah. I think he's our first, uh, is he our first 100% winner of trivia? I'm not, I think in our I prior think, episodes, I don't think anybody's got all of them yet. That's so funny. That's pretty good. Good job. I was nervous because I, I thought I was coming up with some clever questions here and then I questioned it. Those are good. Now, the $100. So you've won $100 to be donated to a charity of your choice. I have a little... Uh, guess on where it's going, but why don't you tell us officially where's your um, donation going? I would like to send that donation to North Platte Skate Park Fund. Great. We'll be happy to do that. Congratulations. Thank and, you. And again, thank you for being here today. Yeah, it's been great to meet you. And I want to encourage all of our listeners out there to pay attention what's going on with you and your group, whether that be going and watching some of your events or supporting your fundraising efforts. Thank you. As always, thanks for listening to the Nebraska and Bang podcast. Before we go, if you enjoyed our podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave us a review. We are member FDIC and equal housing lender. Oh, and by the way, our compliance guide, Jim, said I needed to remind you. Nebraska National Bank maintains a referral relationship with professional financial advisors. The investment products offered by PFA are not insured by the FDIC, are not deposits or other obligations of the bank, and are not guaranteed by the bank and are subject to investment risks, including possible loss of the principal invested. Also, this material is not intended to provide and should not be relied on for tax, legal, accounting, or investment advice. You should consult your own tax, legal, accounting, and investment advisors. There, we made Jim happy. Nebraska Land Bank Podcast. Every voice, every topic, every time. <laughs>